energetic, transformational, charismatic, high chief, Professor Students, 
contra essa esse e mudar Our host acting director, IPA, is Dr. Ito Okasor. The team, the team faculty of art, Professor Elsie Lucas. The team faculty of education, Professor Keiko Omolojiwa. The team faculty of engineering is represented by engineer Dr. E. Ikoza. The team faculty of environmental sciences is represented by Dr. Jeff Wolu. The team school of nursing, Professor Dobi Osarugiamu. The team faculty of pharmacy, Professor A. Opara. The team faculty of social sciences, Professor D. A. Owen. Director of Center for Entrepreneurship Development, Professor E. E. Ugyagi. <laughs> Director of Center for Forensic and DNA Studies, Professor E. Matar. <laughs> Director of Center for Educational Technology, Professor H. O'Hagina. <laughs> Director of Intellectual Property and Technology Transfer. Professor A. E. Ovebu. <laughs> Director of Central Center of Excellence, Professor Mr. C. Donna Obu. <laughs> Director of Center for Sustainable Development Goals, Professor Mrs. U. Ikubu. <laughs> Director of Investor of Advancements and Development, Professor Edith Eraiji. and internalization, Professor E.F.O. Enato. <laughs> the acting director, Institute of Education, Dr. Mrs. I.F. Young. <laughs> Leading the vice chancellor's profession is Senior, senior Assistant Registrar, Senate Matters, Mrs. Enye Odia. I now have the honor and privilege to invite our own dear Vice Chancellor to introduce the Nongwa Lecturer. <laughs> Whereas our victory 
view of the history and experiences so that we continue to nurture this system and make it truly the university of, you know, the best university in the world, not even in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce our lecturer for today. He is Professor Juan Buizu Aysen Achille. The title of the lecture is Testimony of Hope, the Triumphs and Powers of Economics of Health and Illness. I am sure we will all be keen to this lecture because it is touching an aspect of us that we all want to know a lot about health and wellness. And of course, the interplay with ignorance. Professor Albrecht Achimo was born on the 20th of April, 1954, to the family of Oha Chief, Ezewono and Madame Ekena Achimo of Obi Nabu, Obi in Enugu State. He completed his primary and secondary education between 1960 and 1974. That includes, of course, the active civil war years. In 1975, he proceeded to Florida Memorial University of Science and Arts, Oklahoma City in the United States of America, where he backed the BS degree in economics in 1978. He obtained the Master's of Arts with emphasis in international economics and Master of Arts in political economy with emphasis in health economics in 1982. From the University of Texas in Dallas University. He proceeded to the University of Pune in Sweden for his postgraduate research studies in multinational pharmaceutical investment policies in between 1984 and 86. After his first degree in 1978, Professor Achille worked as a graduate assistant at the University of Texas in Dallas from 1978 to 1980 and as, as an assistant sales manager as Sella and Robert Richardson in Texas. He was also an assistant manager in bookkeeping department, National Bank, Dallas, Richardson, Texas, from 1980 to 1982. Also between 1982 and 1983, he was the director of international operations at ARP Plus. Motional Corporation in Dallas University. On his return from the United States of America, he did the mandatory one year national youth service with the University of Penny from 1984 and obtained his Doctor of Philosophy degree in 1992, namely in international economic relations with emphasis in health and pharmaceutical economics and investment policy from the University of Berlin. He joined the services of the University of Berlin as lecturer in January 1984 as the Institute of Public Administration and Extension Services, IPDES, and wrote through the ranks to the full position of a professor in 2007. Professor Akine has held several administrative positions within and outside the University of Berlin, such as Chairman, Student Baptist Union, University of Science and Art of Oklahoma City from 1976 to 78, President, Nigerian Student Union, University of Science and Art of Oklahoma, 76 to 78, President, Nigerian Student Union, University of Texas at Dallas, 78 to 83, President, Association of American and Nigerian Trade Graduates from 1990 to date. I wonder when people will stop from the DVD, if you still be the President of the Association. Our first National Policy Secretary in the American Economic Society from 1890 to 93, Coordinator of Postgraduate Program in the Department 
from 1991 to 1998. Founder and coordinator of Advanced Diploma in Health Care Financing and Management in IPES. The member University Admissions Board from 96 to 99. The member University Research Board. Director of IPES from 2003 to 4, 2005 to 6, 2008 to 2009. He is the editor of the journal of Nigerian Health Administration and Management from 1999 to 8. He is the editor of the journal of Administrative Science from 1997 to 8. Professor Akimi is a member of several professional associations, such as the Nigerian Economic Society, the Nigerian Political Science Association, the Union of Radical Political Economics, USA, American Biographical Institute. He has served as a standard examiner to many Nigerian universities, and he has over 25 articles in local, national, and international journals. He has authored 10 books, contributed to chapters to six different books, and written three technical reports and has attended many local and international conferences. He has successfully supervised five PhD and several master's degree students. Since 1988, he has been a health consultant to many international agencies, such as UNICEF, CUSCO, WHO, and NNPC.
many people may not have an idea of what heaven comes to. But some of our PhD students here will have an idea of what heaven comes to. Way before we finish or during the time we are talking about this letter. The letter first highlights how the contemporary issues of health care affect ignorance of health and care as the victim's choice. The question is, what do you mean by victim's choice? I think we will all know more about it as we go. This relates to the identification of the present relationship existing among economic theory, decision science, and health economics in response to mechanisms of contemporary multiple causes of health and illness. The question is what are the multiple causes? There are so many issues we are going to see in this day. And when you get this, you will find out basically what we are talking about. We highlight these contemporary issues and examine how they have variously affected the health and illness within the context of economic analysis in today's economy. All over the world, you can see. Many of my students and most of my colleagues, even Nigerian Economic Society, I would say Professor Lambo and myself, actually are the founders of this health plant in the university. Particularly the University of Benin. That's what gave me the job I am today by Professor Bank. I will explain for it. Because there is nothing like health economics before. What is it? You know about economics, you know about medical doctors, you know about pharmacists, you know about management in healthcare. But what do you mean by what? Health economics. That's a first one we need to answer. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to show you today is that this is stated in the letter to, by presenting a theoretical framework for understanding a broader perspective of the responses, definitions, and explanations of contemporary health and illness by physicians and health economists. What I want to do, we have medical scientists, pharmacists here. For example, my own brother, Professor Obiwa, who was the deputy vice chancellor to a new right when I was coming from Sweden to do my PhD in pharmaceutical economics. He gave me a lot of background in pharmacy. I'm not a farmer, but from a system of economics, you will be, you will know better in the as we are coming. The next point I want to look at here is what I call the gestation of a career choice in the academic community. How did I come into the academic community? It's a very important question that my colleagues, my students and my courses in the university at that time of what happened there have been. The letter grew out of courses on the economics of health sciences that I have taught my students at the University of Union for many years. In summer, this year, 2024, I started here in 1983 at that time. First level and I ended ninth January 1984. Started the war immediately, 1984, it is in my record. I never applied to teach or to lecture in this university. But the Bible said the students, you know, the adult students, said you shouldn't allow this boy to go, but I wanted to go back to here. You know this is? Because my uncle, just in the America, I said, I must do this, I said, why? Why should I do this service? 
He said he must come back. Why do you not get any job in Nigeria when you come back? Better come. I went to watch America. Or later on, I came back. And when they brought me two times to the University of Union, and that's how I started this work. I am today. So during the period, the economic cost has grown rapidly, resulting in a cost reading which is sufficiently large to cause my students' consent. Let's look at it and you understand. Because if they don't have a very good background, they make money. What are you talking about here? This is good. Now we have, I think, the practice of what we know. I will say we are the first in this country, in this university, to establish PhD and master's degree in what health administration in this American market, of which we have for here, for all our class. And the first in one time we talk on this issue, too. And this is a great deal. So what I want to explain here is that the usefulness of economics is to understand the public policy process issues in medical care. What are the public policy issues in medical care? I will tell you two things. That in economics, economics brought two important aspects into health. You ask me, what are these two? The issue here is that economics offers two very tools and a set of criteria with which to analyze issues of efficiency and distribution. Economics gives efficiency and what? Distribution. efficiency. Distribution is a problem. But if it's efficiency in managing health care, you will not have to in distributing health care. Before I have my cousin who is still alive, he's almost in the back of something. What a loss. He's still living. When she was working in the railway station, when they are coming in with Panadol, I don't want to watch it, that's how I know I've got the board as in and Panadol. Free. But today, if I ask any medical doctor, do you go to hospital and take any of these drugs? No. But they do it because they were not caring about how to manage these forces. The letter also shows the path and have traversed in this terrain in the several decades of the journey that I have navigated to the base of my ability in primary, secondary, and university level as objectively as I could. My epiphany for an academic career in this moment of health care what are the things that brought me out of balance? Health issue. After many, my considerable interaction with my various lecturers and many academic professors at various universities across the world, especially at the University of Union, Sweden. When I came to America, the University of Texas at Dallas, I say I want to do my PhD. It was American, it, it, this, that particular university was very, very expensive in doing many things. Or someone said you can go to Sweden. Sweden, that you pay school fees, you don't pay school fees, but they give you some petrol money to have it with yourself. I'm not, I wanted to come to Sweden, but already I have come back to, to, to Sweden. To so I mean, to Nigeria, when I was doing this, I was going on during the holidays, long time. What for what I got there, Professor Park was one of the world WHOs that award 
um, Nobel Prize, so Nobel Prize. And he said they are the same as the electronics. So he thought he gave me an idea that health economics, particularly in pharmaceutical, will help me in it. And that's where I am today. And that's where I do my thing in my comprehensive exam in PhD. And when I, I they say that I cannot leave my working place and stay there, then I beg them to transfer my, my examination to this place and to see the paper in the university. Professor Guru was the team of good graduate school. When he saw my result, he said, No, they are not going to put you in the department. And that's where I finished my PhD. I transferred my PhD to this. And that's where I graduated my PhD, combined with what I did in school. The next issue is, so that I won't take too much of my time, is somebody else research on health care in the country. What do you do in research? The research I did was on this pharmaceutical economics. You won't believe it. I traveled. There's no city in Sweden I did not go. I didn't have the money. But what do the Swedish government announced my traveling to trade, where I collected that from the pharmaceutical and I combine it with what I have been in Nigeria. What did I do in Nigeria? British and American pharmaceutical, manufacturing pharmaceutical company in Nigeria. How would they actually formulate policy? And how does the policy affect what? Manufacturing of crops in this country. And I will still say, Professor B.A. Obiola. I wasn't very good in pharmaceutical. Not in pharmaceutical, but he gave me a lot of uh, background on pharmaceutical issues before I went to do the research. What I can tell you now, since the end of the Nigerian Civil War in 1970, several public policies have been introduced and implemented. These policies have been characterized by frequent changes of pressure by political, economic, and policy uncertainties. The constant public policy changes resulted in distortions in the investment policies of multinational pharmaceutical firms, what I call MPFS. Multinational pharmaceutical work, firms, manufacturing firms. What are the policies? of the British pharmacy, I mean pharmaceutical industry in Nigeria and that of America. And what did I find? I found that they always had a similar issue. And what was affecting them was the policies Nigerian government politically had. You remember Nigeria had the Nigerian decree, they had many other different policies. But these countries we are not so much interested in actually very good growth in their country and bring, I mean, allowing us to use it here. But what they do is exporting these finished products in their country, but like from Panadol and some other minor drugs and manufacturing. But others are not. Okay, so they are not having me very well. I'm very sorry. So I thought that it was making much. So what we are doing, what I am saying is that this pharmaceutical industry in their countries do more research in a very serious drug they will use in actually attending to their patients in their country. But the ones they want to export, 
So developing countries, particularly in Nigeria, was brought upon that. that you know, that's what they were concentrating on exporting instead of what? Manufacturing. No, they were not. And that's one of the policies they have in their way. The empirical aspect of the study was conducted at both macro and microeconomic levels. At the macro level, a set of public policies influencing investment policy decisions were identified by the use of unstructured questionnaires. The data generated formed the basis upon which the variables we identify and analyze. At the micro level, in the survey of six months national in Nigeria, there are small states at Nongo where they have a pharmacy. And who directed me to so some of these things? I was still mentioned for the social right in pharmacy. It's not mentioning me so much. It's there me, and I don't I can't really talk anything about pharmaceutical investment without mentioning his name. The data collected, as I said, we are used to compare the reactions of American and British manufacturing pharmaceutical firms, investment policies in pharmaceutical industry. The scripting statistics we are used to actually analyze these issues has shown that the use of policy in instruments is appropriate framework for identifying the factors influencing investment decisions of what multinational pharmaceutical firms in the day. Our findings show that while there has been a net increase in response rate of equity immunization in pharmaceutical industry by American and British firms, there has not been any significant investment increase in pharmaceutical technology in Nigeria. I don't know whether we are moving now or not in terms of looking at real pharmaceutical technology or manufacturing in this country. Because most of these countries, they just get certain things that they think we can very, very quickly and, and move away. Consequently, the ownership structure of pharmaceutical technology and the patents substantially fuel the control and what? Management of LPFS subsidiary in What they do, they have their headquarters, have control over finished goods in manufacturing pharmaceutical industry. Low investment in pharmaceutical technology in the between 1970 and 1993 in Nigeria. Our findings also show that Nigerian enterprises in immunization, we have enterprises in immunization policy, increase in the level of MPFS in local. That's how people increase these enterprises with actual. When we find out during the media the Many of our people in deny some of their issues. The degree of similarity of these effects in MPFS in America and Britain that is set. Now, we are going to continue. I'm going to look at three great issues in triumphs and travels in contemporary economic analysis. What are the challenges and what are the travails in contemporary economy? We will get to that more to know the people who are The central point include demographic, globalization, and technology. The contemporary world economy is in a consumer driven recession that is likely to bring issues that is ushering in dramatic changes in consumer scaling patterns. This will inevitably translate into healthcare economic changes as well, according to what we reach. 
theory, the decision science, the return related to hair treatment, and analyze and stress that there are basic relations among them. What are these relationships? Several. The problems of scarcity and choice. Economics is defined in my area as the science of scarcity and choice. That's what economics is all about. Or uh, if you start going to Lord Robinson's to the future, who can we call here? We will tell on this tool and define economics very fluently, like Lord Robbins, who told us economics is science that does what? Studies human behavior as what? The relationship between things and scarcity, which are what? Alternative uses. What do we say? But health does not have its own definition. How do we define health within the context of what? Health economics is simply a soft thing of economics. It's simply what? A soft discipline of what? Economics. The voluntary health risks and choices that must be made in economy to determine the organization of what? Health economics and medical services are also presented. These choices are concerned with issues of economic efficiency and equity in the use of economic and health care resources. The effects of contemporary lifestyle issues which are explained, such as consumption of illicit drugs, alcohol, unprotected sexual behaviors, and other vices that may lead to undesirable deaths and illnesses. The victims are also presented. Other areas include what? Pharmaceutical industry. HIV, AIDS, and other related issues. These are what I call the victims' work. Choice. We made the choice. No other person made the choice. This brief, this talk, concluded that the contemporary economic analysis has more inclusive definitions and a new understanding of economic aspects of health and health. The discourse has also placed the concept of economics of health and illness, the victim's choice, in the parts of global economy, in the context of what voluntary health risk behavior by individuals who chose such actions. My services in many universities have mentioned that. Uh, University uh, Institute of Public Administration is where I started, I told you. Professor Ola was the acting director. Will Bikey was the vice chancellor. So, like I said earlier, the nurses then, there was no pharmacy. The only nurses who were doing that. Work. But I didn't know that I knew what I was doing, like the electors. I thought I'm first. I said, half an IT. They say teachers, major. Uh, young with the like what my son said when I told him to study economics. He said, Daddy, how can you tell me to go and study economics? When they say teachers, major what? Yeah. Yeah, with the ruler. Yeah. <laughs> what they have done is taking in Cambridge in the same area and he told me he didn't go back to what he did. So, what we are trying to say is that what we have with Cambridge actually achieve what is important. The Minister of Work of WFO, UNESCO, and I think a consultant in most of their areas. Conclusion, my ladies and gentlemen, my conclusion shows that I have contributed much in academic, social, and cultural values in the world. In conclusion, this validating lecture indicates that the contemporary economy within the context of war economy in economics of health and care, the victim's choice. We properly examine within the context of health. I will advise 
my younger one. So in my case, which is who will become professors in the future. I saw many of them. At one point, many of them that are here, unfortunately, the people that many people have tried, would have seen more than what you see today. That it is very, very important that we should understand the fundamentals, the rudiments of economics before we can get into health economics. You cannot understand health economics without understanding the rudiments of what economic science. In conclusion, the validation lecture indicates that the contemporary economy within the context of world economy in the economics of health care, the British choice, the properly examined within the context of health care. Economists and health economists should combine their efforts in expanding their knowledge and interest in teaching others of the meaning of what health care economics and its advantages to what others within this context. It is very, very important that doctors, that's what we're having now. It's not ghosty, but go to the river and line with the many of them. There are many good doctors. Some are coming from different products. They are studying that because if you combine health economics and economics, you will find out that the management of the award, healthcare industry, will not be a waste. It will even bring others hand to manage their resources, the costs of the rest of the advertising. We should be the fundamental issues in this area. Based on their goal, I therefore make the following recommendations. To establish the development of medical care systems with capital intensive delivery systems and a positive based type of care. Development of technological environment, development of industrial and medical technology to establish difference between jam theory by the physicians and sub-discipline by the I'm going to talk about champion. What do you mean by champion? <laughs> if what we mean by champion is that doctors or physicians, as we call it, they only know what they mean by champion. That's very important. You go to the lab to do what? Experiment and see what actually is causing what exists through or forth. Then that way you will not know whether it is negative or what? Positive. If it is positive, the doctor will tell you the type of problem. But in economics, if it is not, it is true efficiency and uh, what? Distribution. That actually will tell you whether you are very efficient and whether you are actually advancing more how to grow you their drugs. All new employed academic staff in this area must undergo orientation and in pure economic science before they go into health. I recommend that academic staff should be adequately rewarded. Dedication. This is a dedication. Dedication. I sincerely dedicate this validation lecture to the Almighty God, all those who guided me and implemented me positively in the course of my earthly race. My respect and honor to my late parents who have special place in my heart, but they live for glory, when God still lifting me up. It is also dedicated to my wife, children, and grandchildren, and encourage me to write this paper. Acknowledge it. In the course of writing this short story, I owe a lot of gratitude to my people, to many people, excuse me, whose names cannot be mentioned here for lack of space, 
first and foremost. I thank the Almighty God who gave me the courage, strength, and energy to start and finish this story. I am eternally grateful to my late parents, as I have said earlier, that God is mentioning me again. This is my morning. I thank most sincerely my wife, Christy, and my children and grandchildren who were patient with me while I stayed long hours in the works, in the workplaces. I also, I'm also grateful to Professor Adam Paiki, I mentioned him many times, the former Vice Chancellor, University of the Union, who appreciated my work as a youth copper and employed me without application to be a lecturer in this university of the Union. As I completed my service year in 1984, I thank the University of the Union and management over the years for the privilege and the opportunity given to me and all that I achieved while I worked for those many years in the university. The following by Chancellors impacted my working life in a positive sense Professor Pike, Professor Professor Lele Williams, Professor Andrew Nokonaye, Professor E.C. E.S.C. Manze, and the current Vice Chancellor, my darling Vice Chancellor, Professor William. Which are the major causes of the relationship that exists 
between Francisco industries or companies as well as the state. You might want to look at the choices that we make that may cause this issue as our own problems, like the lifestyle issues, such as consumption of illicit drugs, the use of alcohol, unprotected sexual behavior, as well as other vices that may lead to underlying deaths and illnesses. The actually said that the underlying factor here is cost. He went on to recommend that the government must begin to commit more to research so that disease conditions and illnesses can be identified and also the effect of distribution of the resources so that every Nigerian must enjoy the fruits of this land. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you. 